What is good guys, this is MR94 with the High Grade Gundam Astaroth Origin. Yes, I did say that this kit might beat the Kimaris Trooper when it comes to the best IBO kit in my opinion. If you guys don't know, this Gundam is the original version of the Astaroth using the Shars color scheme. Sticker usage is fine, I only used the stickers that showed symbols for the kit. The rest though, I just painted them, such as the uh, stabilizer there and the elbows. This is also one of the IBO kits that literally begs for panel lining and it deserves it well. The overall detail will surely pop. It's up to you guys if you want to put gray or black lining. Now this is the first Bandai kit that I put weathering on. Since majority of this kit is color red, what I did was to put chrome silver on the edges and random streaks for the flat surfaces. Next was gunmetal for finishing touches and to cover the excess shimmer of the silver chrome or chrome silver or whatever. For me, this is fine since from far away it's not that noticeable due to its blood red color scheme. Onto the articulation, the head goes up that high only. It actually uh, can go up that high and down that far. And just to uh, mention, the uh, V-fin is kind of uh, twisting with the head. It's kind of uh, irritating to um, pose it because it kind of moves up from left to right. It has a 360 motion. You can do a little bit of a chicken neck, maybe a little bit of shenane, mm -mm. and it can uh, go 360. For the uh, shoulder, it has a ball joint there. It can uh, pop out like that, move forwards and back, and the shoulder can have a separate hinge. Shoulder itself can actually go out of the way, and there's a bicep swivel single jointed elbow ball joint on the wrist and for the uh, torso here it has a hinge and a ball joint or a twisting mechanism there a swivel onto the waist itself but onto the torso there's a slight hinge that can actually go up and down only for more crunches and for the uh, front skirt it can actually move but it's not really that necessary it's too small to actually move and for the side skirt you can actually uh, only have a swivel here and uh, up and down motion for the back skirt nothing at all so for the leg it is on a universal joint can kick forward that far back that far outside for full splits it has a thigh swivel double jointed knee and I noticed that uh, the thigh here is quite shorter from usual um, to other uh, high grade kits so you will see that uh, the knee is really chunky and the uh, leg part here and there's no uh, ankle guard but the uh, foot can go up like that down like that and it has a separate toe that can really bend and uh, for ankle rockers it has a twisting motion that can actually go that far and basically that's onto the MS itself and onto the backpack, the stabilizer can go up and down. Going back to the uh, shoulder, it can actually have a hinge that can go up and down like that. It has a swivel and you can actually do the flight mode like this, which will be uh, discussed later. Articulation is actually superb although the flight attachment on each shoulder leads to some weight issues. Some things I also noticed were the shoulder gen joints tend to sag sometimes so you just need to push it in again to lock it in place. Also the leg design is awesome but the short thighs and chunky knees limits the potential or the potential of the double bends for the whole leg. The last option? ACTION BASE! For the accessories this is where I have another complaint. The hands. Seriously though, can't they provide at least a pair of open hands for dynamic poses and an extra hand guards to remove the hassle in swapping a hand guard to this one extra hand option? Anyway, this hand is specific for the shotgun. This shotgun is actually not a usual weapon for a Gundam which is why it adds more points for, for being a badass kit. Next would be the sledgehammer and this one is the main reason why I want this kit in the first place. It's gigantic! Finally, inside the sledgehammer, there is a sword called the Gamma Nanolaminate Sword. Yes, Nanolaminate. 
the fuck? It even has a hole to attach to the extra arm behind the elbow part to support the weight if you want to display it with the sledgehammer on, which I will do. Before I forget, there's one more accessory, which is this attachment to store everything together and can be attached on the side skirt. Finally, to reveal the gimmick, it's flight mode. This is the part where the weight issues on the arms are seen. Overall, this kit is actually the best IBO kit I had. Well, duh, this is the only IBO kit I have. Now really, to be honest, the Kimaris Trooper is still the winner. Aesthetic-wise, they both look good but the sledgehammer wasn't enough to beat the destroyer Lance. Yes, I'm basing it on its length. Like my dick! So that's it guys, if you want more reviews, vlogs, and unboxings, like, comment, and subscribe. Peace!